Hey guys, it's Amber Rain Davis, and I'm thrilled to be Alta News February guest designer. Today I'm featuring the Creativity Kit Fantastic Floral Fantasies, and if you're new to the Creativity Kits, I'm going to walk you through what comes in this particular package. So it comes all bundled together, and we've got some great items in this set. So let's start with the Creativity Kit Inspiration Guide. So right on the front, you have some pictures of projects, and then you also have the supplies that are included in your kit. And once you open it up, you have three different projects on this guide. Not only does it tell you the inks that they use, the stamps and the products that they use, but it also gives you the instructions on how to create those cards. On the back, you have the third project. Moving on, we have more than words, a stamp set, and I love a script and sans serif combination on sentiments. These sentiments are just gorgeous. They emboss really well, they ink up really well, and they can either be the focal point of a card or be added to your florals or other elements. So it's just a really versatile set. Next, we have the Fantasy Floral Die. This is actually my favorite 3D die that Altenu sells. I've used it many times in the past, and it's so easy to layer up. There's only three layers to each bloom, or to the bloom. Here we have the Floral Fantasy Die, and you can see that these are very similar names. The Floral Fantasy Die goes with the stamp set, and the Fantasy Floral Die is the 3D set. So, here we have two large blooms included in this set, and then of course you also have the layering guide on the back of the packaging, so be sure to refer to that. I'm also going to use the Verdant Walk paper pack, and I have to be honest, I bought this paper pack specifically for the black and white papers. I absolutely love the diagonal stripe and the dot papers in this set, and I've used quite a few of them, actually quite a few pieces of them. But today we're gonna to use the watercolor floral that's in here because I was just in love with the color palette included in this and I wanted to do some watercolor. So we have the brand new metallic set that they released not too long ago and you can see that I did lots of um, playing with that. And then we also have the 36 pan set and I've pulled out some colors that we're gonna to use today. So we've got Evergreen, Frayed Leaf, Emerald, Desert Night, Caribbean Sky, and Deep Iris. I don't think that I used Evergreen, but I used all of the other colors. So I am just putting some water on my paper to do a wet on wet technique. I won't kid you and say that this is clean water. You can tell that it's blue over there. And I have Desert Night here along with a flat brush and I'm just applying it in a um, pretty saturated wash there. Next up, I'm gonna add emerald, and then I'll also add some deep iris. So let's talk paper. So because I was just going to do a wash of color on this, multiple colors, and then die cut it with the 3D dies, I used a lower quality paper, kind of with the mindset of like, okay, I'll save my higher quality paper for projects where I'm gonna to need to see the finished project. Like maybe it's a scene or something like that. The reason I mention this is look how the watercolor just stays right where you put it. When you use a higher quality paper, and I did this video back in November of 2019 um, before any new products from Altenew were released, just, just as a point of reference. So this was paper that I just grabbed off of Amazon. But when you use a higher quality paper, like my favorite paper, it's effortless to watercolor with it. You put the pigments down and it's almost like they're alive. They just start moving on their own. So if you're struggling with watercolor, I know you've heard this from other people and I kind of scoffed at it when I heard it, like, oh, it can't make that much of a difference. People, your paper makes a huge difference. So if you're struggling to watercolor, take a look at your paper. Um, I'm just kind of working this color. Now at this point, I compared it to my watercolor pattern paper that's up there, that darkest leaf up there, and realized that my colors were way too bright. So here I'm using some frayed leaf, the Caribbean sky. I pulled out industrial diamond, which is a dark gray, and I'm adding that to dull these colors down. And then here I have the proseolite from the metallic watercolor set because I wanted to add some shimmer to this to help it stand out. And you'll be able to see that in the photos later on. So I'm just helping it along with my heat tool to dry it so that we can get to die cutting. And do be careful when you're putting your tape on for your die cuts, make sure that you're not putting tape anywhere that you want to save because it may pull your paper off, especially if the, your paper is still a little bit damp. 
So there's only three layers to this flower, which is amazing because with there only being three layers, it's you can totally pop up each layer, which is something I really like to do. Now I felt like the colors dried back too much and they were too light there. So I'm just gonna add some additional color. I have jet black, emerald, and then I'm also gonna use desert night. I'm gonna mix those together and start adding some color directly to the die cuts. Now this was closer to where I wanted it to be. And again, it will dry back some, but it's still gonna be much darker than that first layer that I had. So I'll just add a light wash to that. And that was with frayed leaf and some Caribbean sky. And then I decided I didn't wanna waste this beautiful watercolor paint that I had on my glass mat. So I decided to smush it onto the other half of that watercolor paper that I'd been using. So I'm just kind of smooshing it, doing a you know, kind of messy technique. I'm adding darker colors where I feel like I need it. And I'm just working up that color to where I'm satisfied. There I had a stray bit of die cut paper. So we'll just clean that up and here's our paper here. So I've gone ahead and die cut some lighter pieces to go with my darker pieces so that there is a greater contrast in between the layers so that you can really see each layer. Um, I have actually done 3D dyes with just all one color, like white for instance. And as long as you add some dimension in between those layers, like I've actually used this dye with just white paper and it's beautiful. But here I wanted some higher contrast. So anytime I use pattern paper, I try to make more than one card so they don't have any scraps laying left over. I've die cut the leaves out of a paper that the color is virtual pearl. It's a metallic paper, which I think is really pretty. And then I have the Dream Big Sentiment from the More Than Words stamp set that I showed at the beginning. And I'm stamping that in obsidian black ink. And then I decided to add some dimensional foam adhesive behind the leaves and just curl up the tips of the leaves. Here I'm gonna do a sentiment banner with the sentiment strip stamp set and we'll just slide that into the arrangement and trim it off from behind. And here are the first two cards. I added some embellishments and those are done. And I just love how they turned out. I love the watercolor layers. There you can really see the shine that was added with the metallic watercolor. And here I thought what was left over was perfect for a tag. So I went ahead and die cut that with a tag die. I'm gonna add a sentiment here. And I'm gonna stamp this. I stamped that in a dark gray. And here I'm going to, I thought that I would like some light pink flowers with this. In the end, I felt like these didn't go with the tag, but I end up using them on the fourth card. So I, I'll go ahead and show you the stamping here. So the first layer I did in pink pearl, the second layer I've done in coral bliss. And then I'm gonna start kind of doing some rock and roll technique. There I had the wrong stamp, so I just referred to my um, layering guide to make sure that I had the right one. If it's a brand new stamp set, you may wanna rub it with either your palm or with an eraser to condition it. Here I've used Coral Bliss, and then I've rock and rolled um, Heartbeat around the edges to darken it up, but I didn't want full strength Heartbeat on there because again, I wanted to keep this a light color to go along with my tag, which has pretty muted tones on it. So same thing, I stamped in Coral Bliss and then Rock and Rolled Heartbeat. Now, comparing that to the tag, I felt like it was too dark. And to finish this one off, I'm gonna go back to layer one, stamp it in Pink Pearl, and then just Rock and Roll Coral Bliss around the edges, just to add a little more interest. Now I'm gonna create a second flower and it is mostly gonna be, and in fact, I stamp all of the layers in pink pearl. I may stamp more than twice to get the ink a little bit darker. But again, I wanted a really light flower and I will end up using this on my other card. So this gives you a good idea of what it looks like when you stamp a layer stamp with four layers all in the same color. And this is the lightest color in that set. Um, and that's the Tea Party ink family. So yes, it's nice and light, but I thought it clashed a little bit with the purple. I didn't like those colors together so much. So I've switched over to Soft Lilac. I did the first two layers in Soft Lilac. I For the second layer, I rock and rolled Mountain Mist. I did the third layer in Mountain Mist, and then the fourth layer also in Mountain Mist. 
I wanted to darken it up just a little bit, so I went back in with a couple of those layers in those same colors. So this, I, I really liked the look of this. I've never done a flower like this quite so light. So these are the lightest colors for shades of purple and then also seashore. And I cut my leaves out of some vellum, and I really like the kind of dreamy, ethereal look of this tag. Um, and the sentiment reads, it doesn't get better than this. So I'm just taking some natural twine, doubling it up, and adding the string to it. And then I'll just trim off the edges since one of those was looped. And that tag is done. So I added a couple of embellishments there. And I just love the smooshed top of that tag. We'll move on to the last card. So using Misty Morning from the Tranquility Ink family, I'm just taking it the pad direct to the paper at about a 30 degree angle and just swiping it up and down lightly just to add a border to the side there. With Cloudy Sky, I'm gonna stamp my sentiment. And these are the two flowers that we originally created and then I stamped a third with the larger stamps with all of the colors from the Tea Party stamp set. So this gives us a variance in the tone of the flowers. So it's all the same ink family, but we have one flower done only in pink pearl, another one with coral bliss and pink pearl, and then all of the colors in the forefront. Stamped amazing in cloudy sky and simply in dark night so that there would be a little bit of a variance there. And then I've die cut the leaves from a light blue metallic cardstock. And then again, I'm gonna curl up the leaves, um, which I really like to do. I think it adds just a little more interest to the card. And I love the soft tones of this card. And here you can see that finished card here with some embellishments as well. Here are the finished projects. So these, along with the information in the inspiration guide, should give you lots of ideas to use these stamp and die combos. I hope that you enjoyed these projects today. If you did, hit that like button down below and be sure to go to the Alta New website and check out more of the creativity kits. I think they're such great bundles and have great inspiration along with them. I'd like to thank Alta New for inviting me to guest design and also you guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. For more inspiration, visit the Alta New card and scrapbook blogs and me over at notableink.com.